It was a nightmare for my parents. They said, he's mad, he's crazy. So they put me in a mental institution not only once, but three times. Any dream is made possible by taking the first step. So whatever you want something, the whole universe will conspire for you to get it, but you have to take the step towards your dream, and then you'll be guided. I cannot see any pilgrim today. No. But somehow we feel the energy of many, many centuries of pilgrimage. Mm Paolo Coelho is among the world's best-selling authors. We are with him on the Camino to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. It was on this road that he was inspired to start writing, and today he has readers all over the world. Oh, your book and another one book keeping me uh, on more people. I'm glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. That's better than uh, Diego Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. May God bless you. <laughs> Have a wonderful pilgrimage. <laughs> Paolo Coelho started writing at the age of 38. Twenty years later, he has sold an unbelievable 85 million copies, and his work is translated into 62 languages. He had his breakthrough with the alchemist, and he has written a number of bestsellers since. Pilgrimage was one of the first, and he was inspired to write it after he walked the Camino. When I arrived to Santiago, I, I had a kind of sensation that uh, my God, now my life, my life has no meaning anymore. And I said, what shall I do? I would like to be a writer, but uh, so far, and I was 38, I did not dare to write a single line. Why don't I try now to fulfill my dreams instead of postponing, postponing, postponing? The beautiful pilgrim service is a worthy end to this long walk of inspiration. On the road, the pilgrims have been challenged to think about their past, their present, and their future. And for many of them, there has been a lot to go through. For Paolo Coelho, this meant looking back. He grew up in a Jesuit family in Brazil. The upbringing was strict, with no room for emotional dreams. Rebellion is a sacred flame. If you don't fight against the values that you see, if you take everything for granted, the world will never, never evolve. So, of course, I was a nightmare for my parents. They put me into a mental, into a mental institution. Because when I was 18, 17, I don't remember exactly, they said, He's mad, he's crazy. So they put me in a mental institution not only once, but three times. I did not forgive my parents because they don't need forgiveness. They don't need, they tried to do that because they loved me. You know, there are worse experiences in life than this one. How many people has a broken heart and spend the rest of their lives you know, suffering on that, incapable of l accepting this energy of love again. So in the case of my parents, I don't think they, they needed forgiveness because, because they did not, not try to harm me. They tried to help me in a wrong way, but they tried to help me. 
Then when I left the mental institution, I said, OK, I cannot run for presidency because they are going to come with this paper saying, oh, he's crazy, he cannot run for president. But besides that, I can do anything because I'm crazy, you know? <laughs> so I started, uh, well, and it was the moment uh, where the hippie yeah. uh, movement uh, really was the experience of, of, of my life. Mm -hmm. And then young people, different languages, but the same path. And one of the parts of of the hippie culture, it was traveling. Mm -hmm. So I start traveling, and you realize that you, you don't need uh, a lot of things, but you realize also that people are there to help you. I do think that when you're not surrounded by your safe world, when you are vulnerable, mm -hmm. like in a pilgrimage, for example, or when you travel, then you're much more open to other people. You don't speak the language, so you learn how to be dependent. And you learn also this is not something to blame, this is something to be proud of. When I was a hippie, I traveled South America and North America, and I only had $200. Still, I could eat, sleep, find girlfriends, whatever. <laughs> uh, because I realized, and I did not speak English, whatever. I just was just traveling, traveling, and traveling. So a pilgrimage, even if you walk fast, is slow you down. She who would valiant be against all disaster let her in constancy follow her heart and and then it, i had my experiences on drugs you know? and they kill the most important thing in your life that it is the power of your will you don't have any will anymore. You are there on drugs and you forget uh, about fighting for things meaningful to you. Now, I was arrested three times. But the third time, I was kidnapped. So they stopped the taxi and they went. And they took me away from the taxi and I felt in the grass. And they put a gun here. And I looked in front of me and I saw a hotel. And I said, my God, this is the last thing that I, I'm going to see in my life. And this is not fear. I'm 26 year old. You know, I did not live my life fully. And I thought I was going to die. So for seven years, I was totally scared. I left the jail, but the jail was still inside of me. And at the end, you think, well, probably I was really guilty. This is the problem. Uh, you feel, you think that you're really guilty, and you say, oh, I was too heavy, you know, these crazy things of being a lyricist, of going beyond my limits. I should be a normal person. And I tried to be normal for seven years, and I could not go beyond seven years. I said, no, I'm, I don't need to be normal. But then, like, like anything, Time heals. So this is the map of the road to Santiago. Okay. You can see here. Well used. <laughs> there, are, there, are, there are several roads. To Santiago, and they all get together in Puente La Reina. Huh? And then here we are, Puente La Reina. And we have still a long way to go. The Camino is located in the northern part of Spain. From Puente La Reina, 
the Camino travels across the large Spanish meseta, passing the highlands before reaching Santiago de Compostela, a distance of 700 kilometers. This is a monument to the pilgrims using the classical wear, wearing of the pilgrims, the coat, the hat, the stick, and it's just written here. From that part on, all the roads to Santiago become just one. The statue is located in Puente la Reina, and every year, about 100,000 pilgrims pass through this beautiful city and walk over the famous old bridge. So Puente la Reina is uh, a place that un unifies people. And this bridge is there for I don't know how many centuries. And this is a small place. It has for every pilgrim a very special uh, meaning. Like uh, you cross turbulent waters, troubled waters, but you still you go to the other margin of the river. I do believe that all the bridges have a very special meaning in our life. I think a book is a bridge. Any type of art is a bridge that allows different cultures to connect themselves. Now that we see everything collapsing, you know, the political bridge, whatever, the economic bridge, we still have culture. You may not understand your neighbor's uh, way of seeing life, but you still understand your neighbor's story, or painting, or dancing. I realized that the most special and magical things in life that I like to do, they are free. Like walking. I love walking. Since Lord you do defend us within your spirit we know we at the end shall life inherit What you learn in, at the very beginning of the road is that travel light. And this is a universal truth. In our lives, we, we try to carry a lot of things. I'm talking metaphorically. It is a t-shirt of one euro, but now it's much more expensive because every time that you go to a hotel and you put it uh, to, for the laundry, they charge you five euros. So I think that this T-shirt that I bought for one euro now is worth 50 euros because I washed it 10 times, you know. It's much easier to buy one T-shirt every time, but then you have to go to the, to the store and buy, so you, know, you just put it and wash. But this T-shirt now is 50 euros. Originally one euro. Now with all 10 washes, 50 euros. Cruz del Ferro is the highest point on the Camino, 1,500 meters above sea level. The big iron cross carries an important meaning to the pilgrims. Here, they can leave a stone or some of their belongings as a symbol of the things they are carrying and want to leave behind. Thank you.
But it's not the physical road that counts alone. There is also a spiritual road that you're following without knowing. So you have to be attentive to the signs, to the omens, to what happens around you. So I would suggest if someone has the idea to, to do the road to Santiago, not to think too much. But then I start to think about kilometers and wait, and if you're fit, and if you can do it, don't think, just do it. If you cannot do it, the road itself is going to show you. I know a lot of people that pre prepare themselves, they try to do their best, they go and do fitness, and when they arrive here, the reality is totally different. You only learn about reality on the spot. So just take the first step toward this dream, start walking, and I'm sure that the spiritual energy is going to support you to get to the other end of the road. What I learned in this road, it is the good fight. It is fighting for something that it is meaningful. It is fight to do something that you like to do. And even if you don't have peace, the so-called peace, you have joy. So on my pilgrimage, I had a lot of joy. I cannot say that I had peace. And still up to today, I, I'm not looking for peace. I'm looking for enjoying life as much as I can. The road to Santiago is plenty of cafes and and shelters. You also realize during the, the road to Santiago that language is not important anymore. You can communicate through eyes, through gestures, through, to, well, because you have pilgrims from, from all over the world. So you realize that. And in the shelters during the evening, you meet people, you drink, you sing. <laughs> Meeting people, I never think it is by coincidence. I think there is always a real meaning in meeting people. It can be the owner of a hotel, it can be a journalist, it, it, it can be a, a pilgrim, it can be a, a taxi driver. I think that so many things happen to put these, these people together. You have to be bored and raised and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and from different places, and all of a sudden, ta, 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 I want to say, I want to say thank you very much, because Paulo gave to me the possibility to know a side, uh, I think the more important side in my life. I am one person after, and I am another person before. Oh. Your, your, your friend, your relationship in my life. Paulo advised me many times to do the Camino of Santiago. He recommends us when we, you need to stay with your soul, your, your life. But I never listen. We de I never have a time. I work too much, you know. And one time when my mother passed away, I, I decided uh, reflection about my life, about the life, and I go to, I make the Pilgrim Way. I think the Pilgrim Way 
for me is one of my best experience, life experience. You got a friend. Come here. Yeah. I admire Paulo very much. This person who loves adventure, who is a pilgrim by heart, who loves to meet people, to make friends. Monica is Paulo's agent and has followed him since the very beginning of his career. She travels with him on his promotions all over the world. I think uh, in some way when the reader have, uh, reads one book of Paulo and uh, just talk as a friend, I think people uh, recognize as something they have taught as well in some time in their lives and they recognize Paulo as a long friend even never meeting before, no? So it's, it's what I see. People feel immediately they have something in common. He's a sensual, seductor, and a charming man. He, he is so charming. He has the power uh, with the human, the woman's, because I think Paulo sometimes think like woman. He think like woman. Paulo have a feminine side. My really, I am a woman myself. You are? So. You have similar capacity? Yeah, I, I am a woman, and it took me years to realize that. It was only when I wrote by the river Pia that I sat down and wept that I realized that, uh, that uh, my feminine side, that I am a woman. And since then, of course, this is a daily struggle. But I try to allow this feminine energy to flow through me as much as my masculine energy. They don't go along together. I'm not androgynous. Huh? But sometimes I'm a woman, sometimes I'm a man. Uh, so what is important about this feminine energy? Reality goes beyond what we see. We can see pillars. We can see things that we can touch. But between you and I, or Anybody, there's emotions, things that we cannot see. This is a new perception coming from the goddess, coming from the feminine face of God, coming from God the Mother. So uh, we are, if we follow this path, we are going towards a more feminine world. I'm not saying a feminist world. I'm saying a feminine world. Because when, when I was in Norway, and I opened the door for, for a lady, she said, don't do that because I can open my doors. I was very shocked. I said, but I'm a gentleman. I open doors. You know, you, you start behaving like men. This is not what life is all about. Allow us to be gentlemen. Allow you to be feminine. But we are different, but at the same time we have both energies. Paulo is not connected to the Camino only through himself, but also through his wife, Cristina. I would like to try to show you one of my wife's pictures. Look at this single. Huh? They're all over the place. Yeah. Right? And so I will try to uncover on earth 
her, her, one of her, her paintings because she allows nature to work on it. Christina Oitisica is an artist from Rio de Janeiro. She went on the pilgrimage in 1990. Since then, she and Paolo have shared their passion for the Camino, this beautiful road of love and inspiration. Freedom to follow their own personal path through writing and painting has been the most important investment in their relationship of true love. I am married four times. I mean, I lived with four different uh, women. I married my third wife, and it took me years to, to... In Brazil, it took years to have this divorce. So we got divorced. She's a friend of mine, my third wife. And then with Christina, we got this 27 years relationship. And somehow we got superstitious about getting married. I said, my God, this is working so well, and why should we go and sign a paper? According to the Brazilian law, if we marry, she has less rights than if we live together. If we live together, half and half. If we marry, we can establish a kind of document. So for her, legally speaking, it's much better not to be married with me. And for me, uh, I'm glad that uh, we are not married because then this repetition <laughs> stands there. <laughs> but there is one thing that bound us together that makes everything easy, is love. So it's not a gigantic effort for her, it's not a gigantic effort for me. It's love, and when you love, well, everything changes, and everything is justified. And you don't need to be insecure, oh, he's going to meet another girl, oh, she's going to meet another man. Just relax, enjoy the energy of love, a free love. Because nothing in this world forces me to be with Christina but love. So we are here, and uh, my wife and I have a very special relationship with the road to Santiago. And my wife have a very special technique on painting. So she decided uh, to bury, well, canvas in different places in the world. This year she decided to, to, buy, uh, to, to bury here. In, uh, in the road to Santiago. You see that nature, this is gold here. And nature is already working. I would not take, no, I would not take. So this will be touched not only by my wife's hand, but also by the hand of, of the goddess of, of the Virgin. And it is our task to, to share the wonder of being alive and uh, and being on this planet. Uh, we cannot improve the the state of the world, but we can we can somehow try to do something better. Hotel El Peregrino in Puente la Reina is arranging an exhibition of Cristina's pictures. The director of the hotel is quite excited about how this is going to support the different facilities along the Camino. Aquí, en este claustro, va a una galería donde la esposa de Paolo, Cristina, va a hacer una exposición que mínimamente va a durar dos años. Sí, y bueno, todo el dinero que aquí se va a conseguir se va a ser destinado para eh, los distintos eh, albergues del camino, para sus necesidades, no sé, hay que poner una ducha, hay que comprar unas camas, cualquier cosa que nosotros podamos eh, modestamente eh, ayudar.
At the same hotel, they have decided to honor Paulo Coelho in a special way. The director shows us his plan in front of the main entrance. Aquí es donde va la ampliación de la casa a la habitación de Paulo Coelho. The Camino passes through Burgos and the great cathedral in the town. For Paulo, this is a natural place to visit. I would not call this a Catholic church. I would call this a Gothic monument. Yes, it is Catholic. I am Catholic myself. But when you go inside, you see this men and women that craft the whole uh, the whole cathedral so more than anything else when i was looking inside to the work of art what i saw was the energy of love A life without love is a meaningless life. And then you ha try to escape and, and, and go and love God. This is nonsense. First, be capable of being loved by your neighbor. Then you can love God. There is this woman who commits adultery, and she is there in the plaza to be stoned by people. And then Christ arrives, and and look, and people they say, "Okay, let's fulfill the law." But the one who never committed the sin throw the first stone. And then little by little, and the Bible says, starting with the elder and coming to the everybody leaves the place. And then Jesus goes to the woman and says, Oh, nobody condemned you. So I'm not condemning you also. in Austria with a monk and we are in the table and the monk she's a woman she was in this cave for 24 years and I asked her in front of everybody I said but Tenzin what is it to be uh, to have 24 years without sex and she said but then I had this spiritual orgasm. I said, but for you, it took 24 years to have a spiritual orgasm. It's much easier to connect and have physical orgasm that takes you also to this spiritual level. I wrote then a book uh, called 11 Minutes that is basically about how we see sex today and how we deal with it. think that sex was put there by God. And it's funny because the same sensation that you have in an orgasm, mm -hmm. you have in the mystical ecstasies. I experienced both, orgasm and mystical ecstasies. Yes. <laughs> and, and when you have an orgasm, you don't see, you don't hear, you don't, you are totally there. You know, it's a kind of golden light for seconds, but also a mystical exercises lasts uh, not more than five or six seconds. That you have, uh, huh? So you are not yourself anymore. You are something that goes beyond yourself. You are, you are just golden light.
It is Harvest Festival in Santo Domingo de la Calzada, one of the beautiful cities along the Camino. For Paulo, it was quite a coincidence that he experienced this celebration. They are celebrating that the harvest is over. The fields are left behind empty, and life has gone into hibernation. It is the circle of life. The same circle challenges people on the Camino to reflect on both life and death. This I first learned in the road to Santiago, you know, facing our death, not as your enemy, but as your friend. My death is sitting here. She's blonde. She's beautiful. And uh, she always look at me and say, I'm going to kiss you. I say, please wait another day. You don't need to kiss me today. I can just give me another day. But I'm very conscious of my death. Cebrero is a small village that means something special to Paulo Coelho. This is the place he realized that his dream was to become a writer and where he decided to follow his path of life. And therefore, he has made a very special decision. I never in, ever return to the Cebrero. I am only going to return uh, to Cebrero under the form of ashes. And then the, the wind will take me, because my spirit will be here, like any other spirit. I'm not this type of person who thinks a lot about the past. I lived my past as intensely as I could, for example. I only did this pilgrimage once. But when I did it, in 1986, I did it with all my heart and all my body. So if you repeat, it's a kind of downgrading something. There are people who get addicted to this road. I don't understand why. And I respect the the their attitude, but for me, sometimes, I, most of the times, I do something only once, but when I do, I do totally. I am who I am. And so I face the final curtain. My friends, I say it clear. I state my case. Of which I'm certain, wow. I did what I had to do. I had a niche in every highway. But more, much more than this, I did it my way. Oh, regrets. I have a few. Without the center, I plan each travel course, each careful step along in my and more, my journey. I did it my way. Cause what is a man? What has his God? If not himself, so he has not to see the world that he truly feels and not the world that someone who knew 
Gatsiku I did what to and I did it. My road started in Santiago, not ended in Santiago. And, uh, and since then, I'm still following the road to Santiago. If, if not the physical one that crosses Ponte La Reina, etc., the road to Santiago is my path, the path that I learned that is walked by common people, by people who really love and are enthusiastic about, about what they do. I have to honor the mystery of being alive. So I want to live with my questions. They are much more interesting than my answers. <laughs>